Hello and welcome to my art class. Um, this is Miss Bianchi and you might actually hear Hazel in the background. Hazel's my little miniature pincher. So from Miss Bianchi and Hazel, we'd like to welcome you to our drawing class. Today we're going to kind of stick with the same theme of fall, but this time I'm just going to focus more on flowers and more a loose drawing of a flower. Hmm, I can get the word out. Um, not necessarily an intense drawing. So basically what I want you to do is we're going to do two different flowers on this page. I have an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Uh, you can go ahead and do it on pretty much any size. Just go ahead and do it in proportion. And um, these flowers are kind of similar to the sunflowers, but I don't want to talk too much without showing you. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to go ahead and place one of my flowers on my top right side of my drawing pad. I'm just going to do a loose, loose circle here. And then um, I think my next flower is going to be here. And I'm just kind of placing the circles only because I want to make sure that I don't overtake the drawing pad with the one flower. Okay, so what I'm going to um, have us draw are some, some flower petals that some will extend off the page and others will not. Um, this particular one, I'm going to draw towards the bottom left. And as I get to the edge, I'm going to kind of create a point, but not a soft point. Simply put like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue these type of petals. All the way around. It's okay if they're not perfect. We can always change them out if we want to. This one's going off the page a little bit. I'm a big fan of going off the page. I'm not exactly sure why, but they go. It's pretty famous for doing that with having its dancers dancing off the page. Maybe that's why he's influenced me. Some of these get a little too soft. There we go. Okay. So that is the front of our flower. And I'm noticing this one's probably too small. So I'm going to go ahead and change that, make that just a little bit larger. And some of these petals, I didn't mean to get soft curves. Really want a soft point. Okay. Now we're going to do some petals in the back. So in the petals in the back, you're not going to see the full petal. So we'll start where you would begin to see the full petal. Feel free to move your sketchbook around to allow you to get maximum um, comfort, I guess is the word I'm looking for. I have an injured wrist here, so I do need to move it around a little bit. Oops, now I'm going to try not to move it so much. Sorry. You'll notice even though I placed that other flower, 
Um, I am occupying most of the space, aren't I? <laughs> Good intention. There's our one file. I'm not seeing, I'm not loving this right here. Bring that up a little bit more. It seems a little out of place. <clears throat> okay. Now here's our other flower. Now this flower is obviously going to be more in the background of this flower. So since it's already going to be in the background, because I've overtaken my <laughs> drawing pad with this flower, which is looking less and less like a um, sunflower and more like a daisy. Sunflowers have larger centers. So if you wanted to go for the sunflower, we could always just increase the size of that. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do my second flower. And since it is going to be in the background, it's going to be much smaller because um, the items in the forefront are in the foreground are much larger. So. This one, I'm going to continue with the same type of petals to a smaller degree. And when I get to the actual first flower, I'm not going to draw over those petals. And now I'm going to do those petals in the background of the um, flower. <clears throat> and then one more here. Okay. Now there are some things I would change. And I'm going to go in and um, erase the pencil marks that I no longer need because if we are going to use some fall colors on these um, flowers. We're going to use some yellows and when you're using yellow you'll see the pencil in the background depending on if you're using marker or even colored pencil you'll still see the, the pencil mark. Okay. Okay. So now we have two flowers that um, we, uh, one is obviously in front of the other one, although there is some information here that could be a little bit confusing. Uh, so what I think I might do is make it a little bit less confusing and not show the end of this petal. Uh, so that way visually it looks like it is behind this, this flower. Because I think it just looked a little too confusing for me. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do some coloring. And as I'm looking at all the lines that I want to erase, I am deciding if I want to change anything else. If I like all my petals the way they are, 
if I need to make some a little less, like this one's a little, make it a little bit pointier. And this is just a preference, obviously. It's like you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. And always feel free to deviate with your own personal taste. Um, this one, I think we're good. We're good. For the most part, we're good. This one's a little thin at the bottom. And now I'm just now I'm just being a nitpicking silly fool. Okay. Okay, but I do want to make sure I erase those lines that I no longer need so we can get into cutaway. So my last video, what I did with you guys is I showed you how to color in the um, object, the pumpkins was the last video I did for you guys. And I actually used watercolor pencils and I would like to continue to do that only to give you guys the ability to do that variation of using watercolor pencils because they're great. Like if, if you wanted to get into painting, they're like the great, the best resource available out there because they're easy to store and um, they're just not as messy. At least I don't think they're as messy as regular paints. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, but if you don't have access to watercolor pencils, please feel free to just use the colored pencils because the way I'm using the watercolor pencils are very similar to the regular colored pencils. And also if you wanted to use markers for some of these situations, um, like if you wanted to color in some of these larger petals with markers, you can always do that too. So I'm gonna show you um, kind of both type of situations. So let's see here, I think I wanna start off with I think I'm gonna do this one that's in the forefront, orange. <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize. Okay, so what I think I wanna do with this one and make it orange, I kind of wanna, I'm gonna try something out with you guys. So I'm gonna do some fun little experimenting while I have you here. I'm taking my marker, my large yellow marker, and don't be afraid if the tip is looks dark, it's fine. Um, it's not going to create a dark, uh, line on your drawing. It just looks dark. And I'm going to put um, some of these petals. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow. I'm going to put the yellow kind of down the center here to kind of just give the idea that <clears throat> this flower it has uh, like a nice bright center. And then I'm going to use the orange. Oh. I think I'm going to just do it on some petals for now. I'm going to use the orange for the background. So this is what I'm kind of just experimenting with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So now, so I've done the yellow, and like I said, it's just an experiment. We'll see how it works out. <clears throat> and now I'm going to add the orange to it. And these are my watercolor pencils. But like I said, you can use regular colored pencils. So I'm going to add the orange to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to color the darkest on the edges here. Like this. And these are watercolors. If you're re using regular colored pencils, then um, I would still continue to go dark on the edge like this. And then I'm gonna show you how to do value change with your pencil. So now I'm pressing hard on my pencil so that it gives me the deepest color and it's on the edge. And then as I would go in towards the center of this petal, I would just lift the, um, the pressure of my pencil and then it gives me a different value. So if you see that what, what's happening there, it's giving me a medium value to a very light value. Okay, so I'm doing that towards the center. So that's if you're using regular colored pencils, medium to light value. And I'll show you in a minute what that looks like with watercolors. So these are watercolor pencils that I'm using now, but you can always use them as colored pencils. That's what I like about the watercolor pencils is that you can always just use them as colored pencils also. Well, right now though, I'm going to dip some water in there. So I've got the littlest bit, yes, amount of water in my container here. <clears throat> Making sure that my brush is wet, but not 
doused completely. And I am using my regular sketchbook. So I think what I'm gonna do is I might put a piece of paper behind it just in case I get carried away with my water. I don't want it to ruin anything, but so far it hasn't. <clears throat> okay, so I have a wet, uh, a wet brush here. I'm taking the wet brush over the darkest orange and I'm bringing it towards the center. And now I'm going over my yellow. So I wanted to see how that works out. Oh my goodness, I apologize if you hear that noise in the background. I believe I have gardeners out my window. Hmm, so it actually did what I wanted it to do. So it's given me that yellow in the center. Okay, I just dipped my brush in again because my brush was getting a little too dry. And I'm taking it over the darkest of the orange towards the center, over the yellow. Okay, let me see how that looks. Pretty good. Got my, it's a little wetter than I would like. So I'm gonna let that one go, let it dry. And then what I will do is I'll come back to that petal and I'm gonna go ahead and add some more definition to it, but I'm gonna let it dry. Okay, let's move on. And we're gonna do this to the rest of the petals. Okay, so what you can do is you can go ahead and do all your coloring at once and then come in later and add the water. But I want to make sure that these petals are absolutely dry so I can add another layer of color on top. So I think I'll do a petal at a time, or at least I'll do two petals at a time. And another thing I wanted to mention to you guys, I actually, I think I mentioned the size of the sketchbook I'm using right now is I believe eight and a half by 11 or it's nine by 12, one of those measurements. Um, I found some great success um, with the smaller sketchbooks. And I know some of you do have the smaller sketchbooks and I think that's great because then these drawings, they don't take as long. Because <laughs> um, you have smaller space to color. So for me coloring these in, it might take a little bit longer than it will for you which is the beauty of the video, is you can speed up through my coloring process. So right now I'm just going through all of the front petals and adding the orange with some um, good pressure on my pencil. If you're not using the watercolors, then feel free to just go ahead and uh, continue coloring in this with the medium pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and do that with this petal right here. So I'm putting medium pressure to light pressure to almost like barely any pressure over the yellow. And it's still gonna give me the same effect as if I colored, um, did the water coloring. And then once I get over the yellow with the very lightest pressure, then I'm gonna start adding more pressure to it. So then I can meet up to the other side that has deep pressure on it. Okay, medium pressure, moving to light pressure over the yellow, back to the medium pressure, to the hard pressure. And that's a value change for you. That's how you change the value when working with colored pencil. So deep pressure, medium pressure, light pressure over the yellow, medium pressure, back to the hard pressure, okay. And that's what you're gonna do. So if you're just using regular colored pencil, you can do that. If you wanted to use markers, you could use markers. I would use the lightest marker of orange. And then after the markers dried completely on the paper, then I would go over the marker with a colored orange or yellow pencil to give it that feeling of depth and texture. So 
<clears throat> so now you see the difference between the watercolors and the regular color pencil. Not, not awful. I mean, like they're they're obviously different, but um, they still give the uh, the idea that here in the center you see a nice lighter streak of your petal, which is interesting because we're going to come back and we are going to put another line down the center just to to show, um, I guess, a depth when I was talking about earlier, when we're gonna show that this is not just a flat drawing, we try to give it some dimension. Okay, so I'm not going to add water to that one so that you can see just how to use it with regular colored pencils. Okay, and I wanna mute myself so I can sharpen this pencil because that's, these pencils are super soft. Okay, we're back now with a nice sharp pencil. I'm gonna keep doing my petals. Now this is the, the trick. You have to put some pressure on it, but I don't wanna break my tip, so you have to put gentle pressure. <laughs> gentle, hard pressure. I invite you when we're in the coloring stage to please feel free to put on some music in the background and enjoy just the coloring process. I'm not gonna talk too much. Okay, like I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and paint a couple of petals at a time so that they have the opportunity to dry. Once again, I'm painting over the darkest part of the orange towards the yellow, the center, so I can cover it. So I, I just wanna see that yellow glow. And again, on the other side. <clears throat> You can tell when it's time your brush is getting a little too dry. It doesn't pick up the color easily. Rewet your brush.
keep working on our petals. I'm going to do a couple more petals and then I'm going to come back to the oops, come back to the first one and show you how I would do some more shading. Again, I'm just doing a thick line of color. I'm doing a thick line of color. Um, primarily, so I can, the color will drag more into the center. If you do a thin line of color, then it'll give you a lighter orange or as you get closer to the center. And then again, it's if you're using the watercolor pencils. If you're not using the watercolor pencils, then you're just going to continue coloring this in with varying degrees of pressure on your pencil to lighten the value of that color towards the center. Now, if you were to color this entire thing orange, with this pressure and put the water over it, then you would have a deeper orange color. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate that, demonstrate that view. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this petal. I'll do this petal. So this one's in the background. And since this petal is in the background, it is going to be darker anyway, because it's further in the back. So I'm still going to cautiously color to make sure that you don't see individual lines from my colored pencil because those individual lines will show up when you're painting it, when you're adding the water, if you don't do it nicely. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna add Water to this one, and you'll see that the petal is definitely darker, right? Which is not a bad thing because it is that, it is the darker, it is the petal in the background and it will be darker. So that's what happens if you color the entire thing. And that's why I'm only adding a little bit of color on the sides because I'm dragging it towards the center so it's a lighter orange. So I want that yellow to show up. So that was purely an um, experiment and it actually has worked out exactly how I wanted it to, which is wonderful when that happens. Get that little bit of yellow in the background. And if you don't have access to watercolors, but you do have a lot of old Crayola markers, I've actually gutted the markers and put them in water. So if you have Snapple bottles, empty the Snapple bottles, put the marker gut into the water in the Snapple bottles, it makes the most brilliant watercolors, but be careful they do not wash out of your clothes because they're markers. Okay, so that's um, those are those petals. Do this one too. Very good chance we are not going to finish this painting today, or I should say this drawing today. So I want to make sure I show you all the little techniques I wanted to show you. So after this one, after I finish painting this, I'm gonna go back to that first panel and show you how I would add color on top of it to give it a little bit more volume dimension. Okay. <clears throat> so the very first petal we did was this one right here. Here, and it's dry now. 
So there's, it's, there's no water on it, which is nice because then I'm gonna be able to put my colored pencils over it and um, do a little bit of shading. So that way you can see what I'm going for actually. Um, so I'm grabbing my brown, I'm grabbing a brown and I'm grabbing a orange regular colored pencil. And I'm not loving the colored pencils I have because they don't give a very a, a good variation. So here's the brown and the brown I'm going to use, all oh, these to be sharpened, hold on one second. The brown I'm gonna use to show some shading. Let me sharpen it. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a very thin line of this brown in the center of the flower, like the vein of the flower, and a little, little shading on this side, little shading on that side, but not to erase the that thin brown line in the center. So maybe I need to do a little thicker. A little thicker if I'm going to do some shading on this pencil sharpened row. A weird sharp edge. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of pressure on both sides. And so I'm going to, it gives it a, a sense that this flower is kind of a groove in it. Because now I'm providing a little shadow. I'm just doing that. A little bit of pressure. And it's, we still see that yellow coming through, which is kind of nice. And if I want to show that these petals actually are not so flat, now I probably could have gone over this a little bit more with my watercolor and, and gotten rid of this thick line here. I could have dragged the color more towards the center, but since I don't want to wet it again, I'm going to go ahead and show you how does it add brown to the edges as well. Just like a little dark, like heavy pressure, and then coming in towards the petal, a little bit medium. So pressure, when I say heavy, medium, or light, I'm referring to the pressure right now because I'm adding a darker color to give um, a sense of like curvature with this petal darkest on the edge because that's where it's curving. Medium pressure towards when I go towards the inside. And then I just go to the very light pressure as I get closer. Okay. <clears throat> There's that dark line, dark pressure, medium pressure, light pressure. It also gives a sense of texture too when you add different colors to it. Now, we know that petals usually are connected to this the inside of that flower in it, so it'll create like a little shadow as well. So I have a dark line there. And I'm going to do some medium pressure to light pressure as I get closer, or as I get further out, I should say, from the center. Okay. Do the same thing on this side. So I'm putting some pressure on my pencil with my brown color, and I'm easing up like a little medium pressure. Dark, heavy pressure, medium pressure. Keep going, same type of thing. And if you're not sure, like if you want to practice pressure on your pencils, what you can do is this. So I call these tornadoes. So I start with like the heavy, hardest pressure like this. And as I go down, I'm easing up on the pressure of the pencil and you can see that it's changing the value. And as I'm easing up on the pressure, the pressure is getting lighter, lighter and lighter and lighter. 
So that's how I practice my value changing with my colored pencils. Pardon me, I'm using scratch paper, so you can probably see the line, the words on the back. Okay, so again, I would do hard pressure, medium pressure, starting to lift up the pressure here, even more so, even more, 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 more. So, so those are my little value tornado to practice um, your value change. And I am using a regular color pencil, and I'm using Prismacolors. And even though Prismacolors are amazing, pencils to use for an art student. I don't love them so much because they're super soft. Super soft, which you end up using so much more of the pencil at one time. So. And those are my value tornadoes. So if you want to practice those, you can. <clears throat> okay, so see they're super soft and now I've got like this blunt edge to my pencil. Um, so I'm just, okay, so on the edges again, heavy pressure. Medium pressure, oops, and actually, that doesn't look good. It's a little too heavy. I think that my old paper's still wet there. From heavy pressure, then I'm going to go into medium pressure. I think this side is still a little wet. It's holding on to the color too much. And that's kind of how you give that some volume and dimension to your, your petals if it's curving in. Now, for example, I don't like what I did here because the brown right there was much darker than I wanted it to be. I'm not sure why it maintained that color so much. So you can always go over it again with your orange and diffuse the brown that you just did. I mean, there's so many ways you can go about it. And this is what I love about colored pencils is you can layer if you wanted it a softer edge instead of seeing these obvious lines that were added to your drawing. So you can always go over it with orange and it kind of softens it up. And this is one thing I don't like about the Prismacolors too. When you go like this with your hands, which you should never do as an artist, and I'm giving you guys modeling a bad example, is it does leave some residual color. Okay, so that's um, uh, one way I could go ahead and add dimension to the panel. And if you guys just wanted to do a, just a really nice, beautiful, free for all, not technically skilled, you know, drawing, then you can just do this and it looks just as beautiful, um, more free, more, um, free-spirited, you know, more like at an elementary level. And it's it's really nice too. But this is for those of you who want to just dive deep into shading. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue. Now I wanna make sure I put away my colored pencils so I don't think I'm using them as watercolor pencils. That would be bad. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back into coloring my petals. Now I wanna erase this line because it's going to show up. And I color. I'm going to try something on this petal here. Let's see how it looks. I put some brown towards the bottom, orange, 
I'm experimenting. And then, yellow. And these again, these are all my watercolor pencils. I'm going to see how that looks. I think this one is, yeah, that one scared me. I thought it wasn't watercolor. Eh. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to see how that one looks. I'm excited about that one. Let's see how that looks. So if I bring the color in, so I got my wet my brush. Oh, no. Now, here's a great example. This is not a watercolor brown. I put it in the wrong spot. This is my watercolor brown. <laughs> you know what? Not going to worry about it. There we go. I'm just going to go over what I know for a fact to be watercolors. So there you go. That was a that was a good example of what not to do. Check your pencils. I checked it with my orange and my yellow, but I did not check it with my brown. Okay. So well, now I've got brown outlined. I can fix that, but I have to wait for it to dry. <laughs> it's all good, peeps. It's your drawing. We're not in any particular contest, are we? Okay, so I'm gonna do, let me show you again what I was thinking I was gonna be doing. Here's a me watercolor pencil that has the watercolor brush on it. <clears throat> Putting the brown down. Hmm. Silly, silly, silly. But it's okay to make mistakes, right? This is how we learn. I don't promise you I won't do that again, right? These are my watercolors. It almost kind of looks like a Candy corn, except there's a brown in there. Okay, so now this is what I wanted to show you. If I take my watercolor brush through it and blend my colors together, how would that look? How would that look? Well, that looks pretty good. It looks pretty interesting. Not so bad. Okay. Don't want to put too much water there because this is not watercolor paper. So when you're not using watercolor paper, you don't want to have add too much water to your brush or your paper. So I'm not using a watercolor brush. I'm just using a regular old brush. I'm just trying to Give you guys some ideas of um, everyday tools you might have at home. Maybe not, um, but I'm trying to just experiment a little bit with different things. I am not an expert in watercolors. I might, I, I'm a student of watercolors, I guess I could say, but I like to experiment and that's why I'm taking you guys on that journey of experimenting with me. So I'm going over those colors. I love to use watercolor pencils in the middle school art classroom because it really does um, seem to work out better as far as cleanup and just experimenting with using watercolors and colored pencils and markers together. So this project that we've done today incorporates three different types of medium. I'm kind of rushing. I wanted to get done with one flower and not have you guys be too bogged down with a long video. But what did I say about the wonderful thing about videos? You can speed through them when I'm coloring. So you don't have to ex sit here for the whole hour. Okay, so I'm going to finish coloring my back petals. I might do a little bit of the brown, not as much. <clears throat> okay. And I'm 
going a little bit faster than I would normally because I'm believe going fast is more opportunity to make mistakes. So just going a little bit faster than normal just to get through the drawing with you. These are my watercolor pencils. Again, you can do the same thing with regular pencils. Although I, if you do the regular, if you're using the regular colored pencils, I wouldn't put the brown on until after. I wouldn't layer like this. But since the watercolors um, blend, this is why they look so blunt. So I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I wouldn't put such blunt colors in like this. Um, what I would probably do first is add my yellow and then orange on top um, and then brown. So you go for the lightest and that way you have more control over how it blends if you're using yellow because yellow is such a light color. If you wanted that yellow brightness, it might get lost if you tried to just put it on top. Okay, so now let's see how that looks. Adding my watercolor to it. I like that better. I like the less brown better. Be very careful around the edges. My brush is going to dry me. It's just a little too dry there. It wasn't dragging the orange out of it. Okay, now what color is the center of this? Let's go for green. Let's do the green. Now I'm going to color the edges green. Oh, you know what? Let's do. Oh, no, actually. I was going to say, let's put some yellow marker in the center, but maybe you have to wait for that marker to dry. I'm just going to do a circle of green. We won't get to the second flower today because I did the, the huge flower here. I should have just done it on a smaller sketchbook. Uh, live and learn. Live and learn. But what I will do. Let's do the yellow here. I'm doing it in circles because it's a circle. Okay, I'm going to add my watercolor brush, bringing it from the deep edges here towards the center. I'm kind of doing curved strokes because it is a circular object here. Look at that. See my yellow still. That's what I wanted. I have to tip the water a little bit more. I'll push my water. You know what? I introduced Hazel to you guys, and she actually didn't make a peep. Shocker. Okay, so there we go. That is the center of my flower. Oh, now this looks too, too dark there. Okay, now I'm no Bob Ross, but what are you going to do, right? Okay, so now I'm going to, so I did show you how to do this one that showed you some 
to create a crease in there to, to give that flower a little bit more like a three-dimensional type look. No, what I do want to do is I want to go back and I'll show you how to correct this. So this was when I accidentally used my color pencil instead of my watercolor pencil. So I'm going to go back to that and I'm going to add lighter pressure so it doesn't look as obvious. So I'm like, I'm trying to show value change so it doesn't look as obvious with my dark strokes. So hopefully that'll be better. And I'm using my regular colored pencil right now because that's what I messed up with using the colored pencil before. So now I have to fix it with a colored pencil. Okay, so now it doesn't look as drastic. But one thing that I do recommend for everybody when they are working on a project, when you're done and you're, fine, you're doing your final completion, I always recommend doing the slightest line in black. This is like a really, really thin marker. And I love this thin marker because it's so tiny thin and it just separates the petals. And I know not everyone likes to do this because they think it's obvious, but it's not so obvious when you're finished and it hides your, your pencil. And I have everyone do it at the end. And if you did accidentally go over your pencil line, this is how you would correct it. And you just continue to do those lines. And look, it, it actually looks very subtle. And I'm not even done. Like I wouldn't, I'm not done with this because I'm one of those people that I'm probably gonna go through every petal and do this with it. Now remember, this one was just my regular colored pencil. All of the other ones were water colored pencils. So this one, I'm definitely gonna go back and add more work to it. My, regular pencils. So this is all I'm going to do, but I do want to finish this so you can see how it looks. Those of you who have drawn with me in the past, you know I love to do petaled flowers. Gerber daisies are my favorite. I was aiming for a sun flower, but Gerber daisy, the love of Gerber daisies took over. This looks more like a Gerber daisy. Now the flower that you have over here, the one in the corner, you can do the same color, you can do a totally different color using the same principles. If you wanna use, do some shading, use a darker color. Brown's always good, usually it's good for most colors. And this one was the one where I used regular colored pencils accidentally with watercolors. That's why it looks so different. Okay, folks, so that's that. Let me show you what that looks like. It looks nice, right? It looks better with that, the black line. It's not, it doesn't look very radical. It looks very subtle. Um, these are fine line drawing pencils, not your Sharpie lines a uh, fine line that's a little bit thicker but it still won't look that big, that bad i'm going to probably go back and do my petals a little bit like this every other one um just to get it to look a little bit more uh three-dimensional i suppose um so i hope you guys enjoyed this class and we're going to continue doing these videos for you so that way you have access to them at any time I appreciate you joining me. Have a fantastic day.
Thanks for coming.